everyone, and welcome to the Big Little Race! These four competitors will attempt to zoom through this track in order to become the first to finish! They will make their way through the woods, across this bumpy trail, through that tree, and across this finish line, if they can! Let's see our competitors! First we have the yellow team! Next we have that green team! Here we have the blue team! And last but not least, the red team!
Hugo Nogo here at the Lab of Unusual Discoveries. Here at the lab, we are discovering we are known by God. But how? Great question, loud learners. You see, we are seen by God. There are a lot of things for us to see. Like, hey, there's a sandwich. Or I really like your hair. Or out of all the nice people I've met today, you've been the nicest. Don't just keep it to yourself. Say it out loud. Turn to the person next to you and say, I see something. I see something. <laughs> A discovery. Windy Widget, what wonderful widget have you whipped up today? Hugo, hmm. you know how God is so huge and yet he still cares and sees the concerns that we have in our daily lives? Mm hmm But you think about it, it might make us feel a little small. So mm -hmm. behold the light elementary magnetron! Uh, flashlight? Ah, no silly, no go. No need for a magnifying glass to see what you cannot see. Merely shine the illuminary magnetron on something small and then light magnifies the object ten times. <gasps> Can you read this eye chart? Mm, only the E. Behold! What? That's amazing! <laughs> Whoa! Like the Illuminary Magnetron, God's light and his power illuminate in our lives and through our lives for others to see. I see. Only God knows what is in our hearts, and when we trust in Jesus and receive his invitation to know and follow him, it changes us in good ways. I am known by God. I am seen by God. And when we encounter Jesus, our lives are changed. We become a magnetron of God's love to the world. And that is a discovery worth declaring. From Loud Labs, I'm Hugo Noko. Keep shining, friends. Whoa. Ooh. Hey, how did all the basketballs get up there? Hey. Oh. Ah. I'm a little lost out here. It's hard to see anything. You have got to see this. Look up. Whoa. I've been so busy looking down and around, I've been missing all the amazing creation around me. I just needed to look up. Whoa, look at that one. It's super bright, but tiny. Oh, I know that one. That one is Arcturus. It's the brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere. It has a name? Actually, they all do. Psalm 147 verse 4 tells us God numbers the stars in the sky. He knows all of their names, even the ones we can't see. Imagine seeing all those stars and pointing to that one and calling it by name. Names are important to God. God knows your name. He knows you. He knows what you worry about. He knows what makes you laugh. Does he know where I am? He knows exactly where you are, anytime all the time. That's good, because I'm feeling a little lost and alone out here. You're not alone. Well, I'm certainly lost. That's not exactly what I meant. Let's zoom in to the Bible. It tells us who God is and that you are known and loved by him. Turn to the second part of the Bible, to the book of Luke chapter 19, where we discover a man who got lost in a crowd. He was small and had to climb up over the crowd to see. Jesus had come to his city, and people had gathered in the street to see Jesus. That's what he wanted to see. He was trying to get a glimpse of Jesus. Would you like to see what happens? Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. Jesus was arriving in Jericho, and a large crowd had gathered in anticipation. People wanted to see Jesus. Among the residents of Jericho was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector, and a lot of people didn't like him. 
The crowd lined the street, and Zacchaeus could not make his way to the front. He was a short man and could not see over the crowd. Clearly, they could see Zacchaeus. Why wouldn't they let him through? Remember, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. In Zacchaeus' day, tax collectors were known to be greedy. They would charge people whatever they wanted and keep the extra for themselves. So when Zacchaeus showed up to see Jesus, people were thinking, I'm not letting that guy through. Zacchaeus couldn't get through the crowd. So he looked around, and just ahead of the crowd was a sycamore tree. Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowd, climbed up into the tree, and waited. The crowd followed Jesus and soon arrived at Zacchaeus' tree. Jesus stopped and looked up into the tree. Jesus saw Zacchaeus, and he called him by name. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down out of the tree. I want to come to your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down the tree and welcomed Jesus to his home. The crowd did not understand, and they grumbled. Why would Jesus pick Zacchaeus to visit? Doesn't Jesus know how selfish and awful Zacchaeus has treated everyone? Jesus did know what Zacchaeus did, and Zacchaeus knew too. He told Jesus, I'll give half of all I own to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I'll give back four times what I took. Jesus was pleased with Zacchaeus' decision of what to do with his money. Jesus explained that he came so that people like Zacchaeus would learn about God's love. Today, Jesus said, salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus discovered he was seen and known by God. Even though Jesus knew what Zacchaeus had done, he still invited him into a friendship with him. Jesus sees value in every person. While the crowds were grumbling because of Zacchaeus, Jesus welcomed Zacchaeus because he was worthy of being changed. Just like Zacchaeus, Jesus sees and knows everything about us, even stuff we want to keep hidden. And still, he wants us to know him. When we see how much Jesus loves us and invites us to know and trust in him, it can change our lives. The sun is out. Can you see where you are? I know exactly where I am. It's good to know where you are, so you can see where you are going. Hey everyone, Hugo Nogo here. We have discovered that God knows us, but how do we know that? We can open the Bible and see it in God's word. Let's open the Bible and see what it says together. Psalm 139 verse one says, Lord, you have searched me and known me. <laughs> Wowza, did you hear that? God searches us and knows us. But how about we learn this verse together so we can remember what it says? When we say, Lord, let's put our hands up in the air and look in the sky. Lord, let's do that together. Lord, Lord. great job. Now, this next part says, you have searched me. God knows us, and he can see every part of us, even our thoughts and what motivates us to do what we do. Let's put our hands up like this and pretend we are searching for something. Lord, you have searched me. Let's do it together. Lord, Lord you, you have, have searched, searched me. me. Amazing. Okay, this last part is the best part. Are you ready? Lord, you have searched me and known me. There it is, right there in the Bible. God knows us. Let's say it all together. Lord, you, you have, have searched, searched me and known me. me. Psalm, Psalm 139, 1. That was terrific. Let's all say it one more time. Really, really loud. One, two, 
three. Lord, you have searched me and know me. Psalm 139.1. Eureka! God knows us because he created us. That is great news. And when we remember God's word, we remember his promises to us. See you all next time.